Hey there, I am back with another tutorial for Video Fort and today we will be in Cinema 4D again and we are going to be lighting and rendering an interior bedroom scene. So if you are want to know how to light interior architectural scenes, then um, you will find this tutorial really interesting. I came up with a pretty good workflow which I use all the time when I am doing some uh, interior renders. So anyway, let's uh, check this out and see what we need to do. Okay, so this is the scene in uh, Cinema 4D. And uh, what I'm going to do is, let's start by just rendering out um, the scene as it is at the beginning. And then I'm gonna be rendering uh, different frames at uh, different stages throughout the tutorial so that uh, <clears throat> we can see the progression and uh, also what we need to do next. Okay, so a few things about um, the style I'm going to do here. It's going to be based on a single light source. And uh, in this case, it's going to be coming from the outside of the interior. Okay, so through this window over here. All right. Um, if I zoom out here just to look at the general structure, <clears throat> excuse me, of uh, this room, it looks like it's open here, but it actually isn't. If I uh, scroll through the object manager here, we can see this uh, wall I put around all of the room and then even the sections you can see through here. That's just me using the X-ray uh, feature so that um, I can always see what's on the inside. But uh, I'm just trying to make the point that um, whatever sections you have open in your room, the light is gonna come through there. So if you're trying to control where that's coming from, make sure that uh, everything is closed up except for where you want the light to come through. Okay, so let's look through our camera again. And uh, by the way, you will be able to download this file so you can follow along exactly with uh, what I am doing here. Okay, so I'm gonna get a physical sky. This is going to be my light source in this uh, scene. You can see it kind of does some weird stuff with, you know, most of this now going dark and so on. So maybe you could go to display and change this to something like uh, quick shading which uh, uses a default light in Cinema 4D. So it's always gonna look, um, you know, you'll always be able to see what's going on everywhere. And uh, you could even go for constant shading, which is this more sort of flat style. And uh, if you change to the lines mode, now you can see where all the segments are and so on. So it's up to you. Uh, personally, because I use uh, Cinema 4D a lot, I like to see the direction of my light and see it react with the scene. So I'm just gonna stick to the default. But um, what's great about the physical sky is you can uh, go to the time and location controls here and actually use specific locations and uh, times or dates to simulate your lighting. So in this case, we could uh, choose a city. So if I open this, let's go for maybe something in Central, um, oh no, North America, USA. And I'm gonna go for Los Angeles. So here we go. And let me just uh, jump out of the camera here and solo this uh, physical sky. And uh, this is how it's going to appear in the scene. You can see the different, you know, north, east, west, south directions. And then you've also got this line coming from the center going out. And then, you know, it ends up at this uh, sphere here. And this represents the sun position in the sky. So this is how you would adjust the direction of where your light is uh, going to be coming from. So let me bring back everything. Our window is over here somewhere. So if I press R to bring up the rotation, I can spin this around 
to try and match the direction of where the window is. You can see it's a bit off still. So something like this here, and uh, I think it might just be too high in the sky. I want to lower this a bit. So if I go to physical sky, I will change the time of day to be later. So let's go for something like 2 p.m., which means I have to readjust the positioning of this again. But uh, now you can see it's lined up with uh, where that window is over there. Okay, so now I could uh, hit render and uh, it just looks a bit strange. First of all, we need to actually open up this window here. Right now there is a, well, there is no material on there, so it's being blocked. So if I create a new material, I'm going to go to transparency and uh, turn this on. And if I apply this to the window, now we will see the light coming through and uh, it hits the floor over here. And I like this as a uh, starting point. Okay, um, I'm going to go to the sun tab in the physical sky and let's set the intensity to 200 just so it is a, a bit brighter all right so that's the first step you know just bring in the light and position it uh, how you want okay so to do the realistic illumination i'm going to be using global illumination so you need to go to the render settings and under effect you want to get global illumination and uh, by default you're not really gonna get much out of this we need to play with the settings and also by default it's just gonna take too long to produce any uh, image here so cancel this let's uh, come back in here uh, you could play with the presets for example just to see what that might uh, do for you so let's say interior preview this might actually give us uh, something we can quickly use as a reference but uh, I also this is gonna I also think this is gonna take too long right now but uh, let's just let it uh, run through see what it gives us and uh, maybe I can explain a bit what global illumination is uh, all about so here we go um, as that renders now you can see it's starting to look more realistic and more natural instead of that weird blue uh, kind of render we had before but uh, obviously what's happening here is the light because of global illumination is uh, bouncing around and that's how you get the realistic kind of look because that's what light does in real life it bounces around and hits surfaces and uh, you get the realistic uh, result now a few problems here it's uh, too dark still and uh, also there just I don't think there are enough bounces currently uh, taking place so if I go back to GI I'm gonna switch this to the default and I'm gonna actually use my own uh, settings for this so for the primary method let's uh, leave this as irradiance cache that's fine but for the secondary method, I'm going to go for light mapping, right? And the maximum depth here controls how many bounces we are going to have. And uh, 16 in this case should just be fine. Samples, uh, this is uh, to do with the speed and uh, overall accuracy of the scene. So let's go for low whilst we're doing the preview. And uh, maybe we would bump this up at the end for the final render. And then um, each of these methods has its own separate tab. We can make more adjustments. So for record density in the irradiance cache, let's set this to low, first of all. And then I'm going to jump in here and lower this even more. So for minimum rate, I will go for minus 4 and for the max rate, minus 2. So this should really be fast when we do the render. Okay, and in light mapping, 
we will change the path count to 2000 and again the lower this is the faster it's going to be and then when you do your final render you bump this back up again also build radiosity maps i will tick this um, simply because it's going to make the calculation of the gi faster if you don't believe me you can read the manual it's uh, literally like switching on a turbocharger in this case and it just makes it uh, faster so and by the way that's a quick tip if you didn't know you can do that to any um you know control in cinema you can right click show help and read the documentation it's very very uh, useful moving on i think that's all for now we can now output this render and see what we need to do next you will see by using custom settings and lowering the values we can get a um, faster preview which gives us a good idea of what the illumination is going to be like um, although the render is very dirty right now and there's too many uh, render artifacts but as far as just getting an idea of what this is gonna what this is gonna look like this is uh, fine okay um, so a few problems still it's still too dark right and then obviously the issue of the splotchiness but uh, we'll fix that as well so one of the reasons this doesn't look so great is because of how we have configured the, the section that the light is coming through into the room so we have to come back to this material in the illumination tab there is something called the GI portal so if we turn this on it tells global illumination where the light is gonna uh, is supposed to come through and then it will calculate it better and give us a better result so turn this on and uh, also there is something called GI area light which uh, currently is not ticked or you can't even tick it because it's grayed out um, this is because we need the luminance channel to be switched on and then if we go back now this will be enabled and again this is just going to help to produce a better more efficient result with global illumination so all we've done there is uh, turned on the portal and enabled the GI area light and uh, if we run another render this should look a bit cleaner and uh, better than before and here we are this is before and this is after just overall much cleaner looking and uh, a bit more realistic even all right so we fixed that issue the last thing is that uh, this is just again too dark and uh, also we need to bump up our settings for the final render um, so to make it brighter there's uh, two things you could do one is just make your sun brighter in the intensity here but uh, I'm not sure that would necessarily give us a lot of um, light so if I set it to a thousand which is really extreme let's see what that would do and uh, you can see that you know the brighter areas are just much brighter than before now and uh, even though the room is a bit more colorful and brighter than before it also exaggerates some of those uh, problem areas with the artifacts so I don't recommend uh, this method um, you can increase this to a certain extent but uh, make it too high and uh, it probably doesn't help so what I do instead is use what's called color mapping which is if I go to effect and uh, color mapping instead of changing the illumination in the scene we are controlling the actual render itself and how the pixels are calculated so we are interested right now in this dark multiplier I'm gonna set this to 10 which means the darker areas of my image are going to be made brighter so um, if I uh, close this and uh, actually I also need to untick HSV 
model uh, or rather let me leave it on and show you what the problem is with it uh, turned on but in this uh, preview we should now see this being much brighter and uh, closer to the preview we saw at the beginning of the video and as it renders now you can see what's uh, what's happening and uh, the HSV model switch we will need to turn that off to fix what's going on over here and uh, kind of what's going on outside you can see compare this to the previous render uh, the floor here you know is very uh, it's you know you can see this is what the highlight is and then the shadow area around whereas here even though the overall brightness of the scene is improved um, the floor the way the highlight appears doesn't look that great here um, it's a bit flat and um, a bit washed out looking so we have to go back to our settings and untick HSV model which uh, honestly I don't know what that means but uh, again you know take a look read up on this see if that makes sense um, I just turn it off and I know that uh, that's what I need to do in order for this to look right and uh, as we now do the final render this is the final look you can see now what I was talking about about the highlight being wrong in the previous uh, frame it should look like this here okay um, I'm gonna finish this by bumping up my render settings so we have a cleaner looking render if I go to the first tab here let's just start by putting the settings back up to medium and in irradiance cache I'm gonna set this to low which is still quite low but not as low as we had it before and then in light mapping maybe bump this up to 3000 or so so not much higher um, but just um, uh, it should be better than uh, than before and uh, with those uh, final settings let's uh, run the render and uh, see what we get and so this would now be my final render as you can see it did take longer uh, because of the higher settings but uh, also this is much better looking than the previous render but uh, that would be it that is how you do an interior render using a single light and global illumination in Cinema 4D. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.